to this. <sighs> Night, Joss, mate. How are you doing, bro? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, I can already tell that this is going to be a really interesting uh, pod. We've, we've basically done like a podcast already in the in the 15 minutes that you've been here. <laughs> kind <laughs> that's, of, yeah. That's it. Well, look, that's, a, that's, a, that's always a sign when I know this, that a podcast is going to go well. When someone walks through the door and it's like, yeah, pia, 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 pia. <laughs> so, uh, mate, already I've already forgotten like key things that I wanted to ask you on things that you've talked about. But, bro, right? Jumping, fuck it. Jumping straight into it. What I'm really interested in is when you walk through the door, you're like, all right, remember the mural that I painted in the art yard about two years ago? Mm-hmm. That was right around the time when you had the kind of, what like a I guess like a mind opening, mind altering experience. If you want to start there, can you talk us through that and then, you know, off we go. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, yeah, we can definitely start there, which would totally shorten the story. Uh, but clearly, it started very earlier. Um, but uh, let's say that that time was, uh, that was, um, I believe, April, May 2018. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so yeah, I had my crew members in town uh, from Germany, the Lobros, and we we painted that wall here. And mm-hmm. I was really, really, really fucked up at that time, uh, health-wise. Um, let's say um, uh, my my personal like inner suffering had come to a, a peak where my body has been doing all kinds of fucked up shit, uh, where I I just didn't understand really what was going on. So. I was flipping between like a deep depression, which is not really, I'm not a very, like, I love life, life is great. I couldn't even understand what depression even is until then. So that, so depression on one side and then this physical feeling of like, I don't really know anymore. Like my, it felt like spirit wanted to like get rid of that flesh vessel you know yeah so it's it's like it uh, and I, I didn't even see it at this point right now it was like just my my my, my digestive system like didn't work anymore at this point already for two years and i didn't yeah i didn't digest it's like it's like uh, yeah you eat something it just falls through and and you like i had no immune system anymore no and out of the blue in 2016 it started and i had no idea what the fuck was going on so, um, and then I went to a couple of doctors, clearly nobody knew what I had and everyone was like, oh, you're, you're in stress and whatever, right? And I wasn't. The only thing that stressed me is that my body didn't work, right? So uh, when I was here, I was actually happy to ha- have the boys around and, um, and that we were painting that stuff. And then I, I just got the information that I, I just can't eat several things anymore and I have to like stay away from all the good things and what like a doctor told you that yeah yeah and and like just uh, doing like um nutrition whatever we did tons of tests and it turns out that i'm pretty much allergic to everything uh and and i'm like okay what shall i eat you know like i was really depressed on that point too because uh i mean like in the end it turned out they can only eat meat and avocados and (laughs) So, yeah, for two years, I literally just ate meat and avocados. But uh, at that point when I was here, I was like, okay, where where in this neighborhood do I get some proper food now, right? Anyway, um, uh, but at the time, um, I was also, I remember I was in uh, a painting another piece with uh, Persue and a couple of people in, um, in um, um, San Diego and... Um, I feel like that was just a couple of weeks before, um, and I painted. I painted this like just my letters and this this character, this and like skeleton, of organs, and it was just opening up, and his heart was floating out, and his eyes were popping out like this, right? So, and at that right at that ex- exact moment, I get a message. A message from. Let's just call him a shaman. And I, I was already on the point where like, I had the conversation just randomly with someone before. I was like, yeah, let's do this experience. You know, it was called the 
only introduced to me as the, the death rebirth experience. Mm -hmm. And I had, at that time I had the feeling I'm, I'm going to die anyway because I'm aging super fast because this is happening. And I, um, I, I was literally like, oh, you, you, you're going to die soon if that keeps Fuck. going like that. And, uh, and, I, and me being like um, curious my whole life and, uh, and not really, I was definitely point of suffering where I didn't give a shit anymore. Like, like, like willing from, to like just try yeah, from, try anything from that from that point it was like all right whatever I, if i if i okay i just want to know how dying feels then you know if it just, if i just come out like that and i know how it is then i'm kind of like prepared um d didn't think about it anymore and suddenly i get a message while i'm painting this exact piece and um uh, and I remember looking at my phone with a can in my hand and I'm, I kind of like was, I could feel this thing like, oh shit, it's happening. This is clearly happening and I could feel that there is a deeper, deeper f purpose happening right now. But at that time, with the perception I had at this time, I didn't put that together clearly. Um, so yeah, like I feel like I, p I finished this piece and a day later I went, uh, to this um, this place and uh, this dude walks out and he like literally seemed like he's walking on on the clouds right and it's like like this European guy t like suddenly telling me like okay you're he asked me like are you ready to die <laughs> <laughs> and um and I'm like bring it on man yeah you know, bring it on and then he tells me about what what it really is and it's called um, uh, uh, 5 meo DMT, uh, or also called the uh, uh, Bufo alvarius, which is the toad. So it's um, uh, what the indigenous tribes were doing, or like how long this already exists, fuck knows. But um, they're they're squeezing the toad's gland. It like the, the fluid literally like drops out and and it crystallizes right away. And it's like, I would say, as far as I know, the, the purest form of DMT. Um, um, of course, DMT is something ex exists in every living form, right? So it's, it's called the, the spirit molecule and all those things. And, and um, um, yeah, but the, the five MEO has like, this, this superpower, right? I mean, DMT is a superpower, yeah. of course, yeah. Uh, but but the five meo is like, it's it's the the extreme super fast roller coaster for the universe. Uh, I would I would describe it. But and is that something that exists like that? You know, in that form, is that something that exists only <laughs> within these frogs' glands? Because like DMT, right, is something that is kind of it's like released in a human yeah. before a human yeah. dies yeah. but am i right in thinking that there's no way to ex that there's no way for me to extract my own dmt um i mean the thing is it also it also like it can happen in your lungs when you breathe you know like meditation you know this thing what you do with meditation you control your breathing and you breathe through all the chakras, which we're gonna, definitely gonna get into later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it just releases, the lungs release DMT and clearly that goes up into your brain and that goes. So that kind of high, which I've, I'm, look, I dip in and out of meditation, right? But mm -hmm. I 100% like feel and, and realize the benefits. But I have had, I used to do a lot of drugs, right? Um, and I'd always say that, that when, I, when I was in the height of like being really like good at meditation, mm -hmm. um, doing like a body meditation, focusing on like different parts of my body and almost feeling the energy go through, when it would kind of be around my solar plexus on a couple of occasions, I felt just through, through meditation that I had just like snorted a massive line of cocaine or taken an ecstasy tablet and just come up on it. I'd be like, whoa, like, you know, that kind of feeling. Yeah, yeah. So I would... Let's slow down for a second. Let's get into that topic a little later. Buzzing. Uh, <laughs> but, um, um, uh, well, uh, you know, the, the DMT is, um, it, it is, I mean, you're right. It's like the DMT uh, opens the pineal gland. Right. And this is where spirit comes in and goes out. So when you're born, 
when this vessel of human and mama's womb is big enough, uh, you know, so the spirit can enter. That's when the first DMT glimpse happens in the in the body. Uh, like that's how I saw it. Let's say, let's say it this way. And um, and so what we be, what we in the end do do is um, we open our third eye. The thing is, there's tons of people out there. Their third eye is already wide open, especially artists, um, because we are downloading ideas. Well, where does an idea come from, right? So is it just generated in this thing where just things go around and whatever or is this just a connection to a higher conscious you know right. being or whatever so is, is it, are we just emitting energies well we can we can dive in really deep into this right but the thing is the things i have realized which come into me if it's my ideas or what not or not it's i have always even long before all this happened to me, I've also always perceived it somehow as messages. Yeah. And it's like, suddenly it's there and I'm like, oh my God, I got to do this. Right. You know, this is amazing. So, so yeah, the, the, that's what the third eye does. It's like, it's like the connection to the outside, like to all the other minds or the, the bigger minds or the universal, you know, the, the, the collective consciousness or whatever. Um, it's a, yeah, that's what the third eye does. Um, and, and mate, just again, and this is probably going to happen like at loads of points during this <laughs> podcast, but yeah, I love that, right? And uh, for the past couple of years, I, I think I've subscribed heavily to this idea. And I don't know if this is a quote or something I just kind of like put together from, from a few quotes, but ideas are what happen when thoughts get out the way. But most people, not most people, maybe that's a bit reductive, but a, a lot of people will think that ideas are thoughts. They're one and the same. And as you say, it's like an idea is something you, you know, like writer's block. You sit there and you like agonize your way yeah. through it until it pops. Yeah. But um, actually it's... It, so, okay. So let's say you are this, this artist, right? And things just come out of you, you know, like, and, and you, you feel like you have to express. What you're really doing is uh, you download those messages and your being and your you is just channeling and like manifesting it into an artwork, into a painting, into music, whatever creation, create the, the power of creation yeah. is, 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 you know, like that, that's what it is. And what the artist does is create clean energy and it's an artwork is always a message to the viewer and um and uh, it's really interesting because i always thought like well do i have this crazy things coming to me constantly and i just <laughs> need to get rid of it because i also need to find a way how to release my inner anger and it just i knew that i had to like channel it through the extreme output of graffiti and uh bones and guts and skeletons and just ripping things apart and like oh, and screaming and um, I'm literally this this uh, this uh, this uh, warrior with a flaming f uh, sword on the battle yeah. cry you know yeah <laughs> like, so this this was it definitely me. fits mate it, fits, yeah. <laughs> it definitely fits the vision yeah this, this was, that was definitely me but like it just had to come out it just yeah. like it was just flooded me in in many ways and um and I feel like that was also the reason why I got sick in first place, because I was literally only downloading, downloading hard and trying to to get rid of uh, an inner urge, uh, which uh, literally had triggered an extreme deep anger where I have no idea. I'm not an angry person. You know, I'm pretty, I've, I've always perceived myself as pretty stable. And but there was loads of deep, dark shit, which I had to like, uh, solved but on some point I couldn't handle it anymore because I was literally come to me yeah you know let's but you so you you felt like that like you know you felt that that kind of like what should we call it like that that toxic stuff that you were downloading whether it was stress or anger or whatever it, it was like you were accepting that on and, and as you're saying not necessarily in like really obvious um yeah. loads but gradually and, yeah. and you just had no way to like to to let that like pass through well, you well, or you well, were like holding well, the, on to no, that the, the art was uh, was definitely a channel but that was like literally six months before not even four months before i was at 
yeah, it was at my my parents' place four months before I did the DMT, uh, and and it was like Austria deep winter, um, uh, like literally minus twenty degrees Celsius yeah. uh, somewhere in it's just fucking snow cold Christmas, right? So so I was there and like Christmas Eve, I was like. <sighs> I gotta, I gotta do something. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, like, I can't not do anything creative right now. So I, I ended up going, packing up some six packs and I painted the freeway bridge, like, at minus 20 degrees. I've warmed my cans up and I knew I had about, like, 90 minutes until I'm gonna freeze and the paint is gonna freeze. So easy, you know, another six letters on some freeway bridge, quickly, fuck it. Right? And I, can, I come back, like, full of paint and kind of, like, frozen. And my mom doesn't really sleep, so she gets up and and like just catch uh, catches me walking in and 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 I'm like with the two two bags in my hand and, and she's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> and and I'm like, um, "In 20 years, did my mom just catch me doing something illegal?" Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And I'm like, "What do you think I'm doing?" <laughs> and I thought that she's gonna give me shit because I did something evil, <laughs> but she was like. Do you understand that you cannot chill anymore? And I was like, bullshit. Mm -hmm. Wow. Kicked my fucking ass a couple of months later. Yeah. Oh, actually, that was in 2016. But it's, it just started to happen on that point where I, I just, I just, uh, you know, you run really hard, you're gonna fall on some yeah. point, uh, pretty fucking heavy. So um, you like you, you it, and I can relate to this a lot, man. But it's like, yeah, you just couldn't be still with no. whatever was going on no. inside yourself. My, you my mind was chill going faster and faster, and yeah. I had to go fast with it. And I go fast, mate. You gotta love the mums at points like that, <laughs> where they just yeah. fucking <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cut yeah. through the bullshit, you know? Yeah. So so back to that um, 2018. Um, opening um so you know like um, he explains it that to me and clearly we're gonna smoke that stuff and um and I, i'm someone i was very conscious about um psychedelics always so i wasn't really doing any because i remember when my friends all did uh acid or whatever like when when we were like 16 17 i was like I'm not gonna touch that shit because I know how much fucking darkness is in there, how deep it gets. I'm not ready to face that yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and somehow I knew that, that this was not something I can do right now because it's puberty. You, you're not really there yet. And if you understand that, I did it out of my intuition. I was like, no. But many people who do acid in the wrong set, in the wrong setting, too early before their personality already like has formed into something, yeah, you yeah, know, for real. They 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 get lost. Yeah, they get lost. And well, almost treating it like a kind of party drug. Yeah. as well. When it, it's it's just not. No, it's not. I mean, it's I've I've never done it, dude, and probably yeah. for similar reasons because I I can't. You know, I was never convinced enough, or mm. I, I never had that intuition that now was the right time. Mm. And I, I was always like, well, I fear that mm. something fucked up is going to happen. So if that's my yeah. fear, I'm not going to go into it. So yeah, and at that point, my suffering was so much stronger than the fear of death yeah and this is when it mostly happens right when you when you start reading about uh, the spiritual awakening um this is this is a big part and i had no idea that i was already uh two years in the process and mate sorry can i just ask though because you seem like such a like you're, you're so well uh like spiritually versed right it's you know you you you, you got a great like you the way you explain things is like really clear so you didn't know that that was, was what was happening. It's not like you have a history of like reading a, a, a whole load of spiritual books and kind of being well aware. I still don't. It's, yeah. I still don't. Yeah, amazing. It, it's just, you know, the thing is like, what I've also learned just recently is uh, there's, there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you can read as many books from someone who had this, made this and this experience, but we're all different. We have to walk our path and go our journey differently as anyone else. Like, and it's like, oh, this is this is how it works. This is how I come to my Kundalini rising. Yeah, bullshit. Everyone has his own way. Yeah, and I and I I refused to get into that. I wanted to experience. I didn't even know that I was already deep in it. You know, 
And when I had my Kundalini uh, experience, I had no idea it was a Kundalini experience, right? Uh, that's amazing. But that's another, that's another topic. Um, so anyway, I, I, I sit there and, and he says, well, this is when the smoke, uh, this is like, he, he didn't even really explain to me that um, he says, this is, this is the one experience you will, this is going to be the most intense experience of your life and you will never forget it your whole life. It will change your life completely. And I'm like, all right, if I get healthy, <laughs> I don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. You know? And, and dude, I, where were you? Like what, what, like, what part of the world? Can you tell uh, us? Uh, Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Yes. And what, what was like the surroundings? Like what did this uh, shaman look like? Is he like, uh, cool motherfucker or traditionally dressed in like some... Yeah, no, it's just some... some, some Oh God! How was he dressed? Uh, some some <laughs> bold, Not Euro important. bold European guys <laughs> like sitting in some 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 little building, some little house in Topanga Canyon. Wow. Okay. You know, uh, and and just trees all around. You know. Yeah. And um, and um, yeah, that's uh, that's. I don't want to get too much into detail. Of course, mate. We're not, we won't give his address away. Yeah. And also, feel free to just be like Jimmy. Shut up. <laughs> it's just because I'm excited, bro. Yeah. And like, there's so many little points of like uh, resonation. But yeah, please. it's it's a uh, it's. Uh, I mean, like, uh, funny thing. Also, I lived in San Francisco before, right? And mm. this was also really funny because when I moved, it it's literally started when I moved to California. And in San Francisco, I was just. I was like, I couldn't deal with the weather anymore because my immune system was fucked up. And like, so and in the end, it just, some higher force just wanted me to come to Los Angeles. And I know now that I had to be here to, yeah. to go through this, this uh, whole process. Uh, but um, so in the end, you sit there on this mattress in this little shed, right? <laughs> And, and he explains it to you and he says like, well, I'm going to give you 10 milligram and then 20 milligram and then 50 milligram and you can ease into it. And I had a friend with me too and um, she had already done it at that point. And I, I was like, I want to go first because I don't want to be influenced by your experience. Um, and I, I, I lied down and I was just like, like the same thing as I go into a dentist, like bring it on. Here comes the pain, yeah. right? Um, which is <laughs> maybe not always the smartest <laughs> attitude, but um, so I, I, I go into it and he, I smoke this, this 10 milligram and you lie back and you, you just, he says, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And you, you like, you're not even there anymore at this point. I was like, how, how am I going to hold something? I'm gone. And then you exhale and you, you, I could just see, and this is, very much me i guess i was i was literally like this little like blood vessel or this just just a just a blood cell itself shooting from my body just literally like seeing what my body does what my body is made out of i was floating i could see that little little things traumatic experiences in my in my in my legs just kind of like and i was just like shaking and vibrating and like my body was just shooting energy and I was like, damn, this feels really fucking good, <laughs> right? And on the 20 milligram, I, 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 was, I was already drifting completely out of my body. So there was already the point where time does not exist anymore. And you are kind of, you kind of have a, a, an, an out-of-body experience, right? So I could literally feel my body like coming back in, coming back out. And then that's the point when you start connecting to something beyond your thoughts like like i could feel and literally hear the the thoughts of my friend and what i could smell is her fear and my body just reacted and said like can you leave just literally kicked her out and i was like i cannot deal with your fear right now because that's just going to be like influential for my experience and she left and the shaman was i could I was telepathically talking to the shaman already and he's like, I'm here, don't worry about it. Like, we can, we can go for this. And then I came back and I was like, how long was that? He was like, well, five minutes. I'm like, damn, that felt definitely like at least 20 minutes, yeah. right? And then he said like, again, he said like, are you ready to die? And I was like, fuck yeah, right? And then, and then I smoked 50 milligram, I believe. <laughs> And then you, again, I went back and 
And in that moment, he was, I, was, I was still trying to hold, but I had to exhale. And with the exhale, my being became super small and was like ding, 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 ding. And I fell deep into myself. And I kept falling and falling into, into blackness. And then suddenly, like, I got, like, it came, like, gravity, like, caught me and I was floating up. And then I was shooting up and then I, I, I was tiny. And I was, I was in my brain. I could see all the neurons connecting. It was like, ding, 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 ding. And I'm like, hi, brain. <laughs> <laughs> hi, brain. And then, like, the neurons disappeared and only the connection points between the neurons um, stayed lit. And now suddenly those were the stars and I was out of space and I'm like yeah space right and then I was riding this this little space purple turquoise nebula mist thing right and then it started to get really fast and then space started to turn like really super fast and the stars became like more of a white and, and the, the um, dark matter became became the black parts of the most intense psychedelic wheel tunnel thing you can imagine. And then I, I got sucked into it and I realized, oh, this is the limbo. And from that point on, I could feel my soul getting sucked out of me and it just wanted to leave. And that's the point where you're like, all right, so this is how it feels to die. And then in the next moment, and I was like, oh, this is interesting. Oh, this is what it is. And the next moment is like, no, 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 no. I am dying here right now. I am going to fucking die. So the fear comes up. And fear, of course, is the control system or the, the, the security system of the ego. Uh, I've cl clearly understood that right away as well. And then I started to, I cannot remember that, but I can still feel it but you start to scream because you try hold, to hold on to your ego and into your life. You're like, Aah! right? And the shaman held me down. I, I don't really remember that anymore, but on some point, not too long, I was just, I can't, I can't go with that pain anymore. Fuck it. This is it. This is like my last moment in this life. I'm going, I'm going now. And as soon as I made the decision to leave everything behind, what, what is me, I flipped through the center of the tunnel. It was like, whoop. so, and suddenly I was in pure blackness in the void, like on the other side of this reality, on the other side of the matrix. And like all that pain suddenly left and you're like floating in nothingness and you're like, oh, wait a second. That is more than dying. What's going on here, right? And suddenly you, like in your head, you hear the voice of the shaman. He was like, just wait. And in that moment, it was like I could feel, I suddenly got cracks in my, in my, in my, my tummy. I was like, and the light was shooting out. And I was like, no, 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 no. The light is eating me up. And then it cracked up all the way, like the solar plexus towards the heart. And I'm like, no, 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 I am the light. And the shaman was still like, yeah, just wait a little bit. It's all good, <laughs> you know? And, and, then, and then the no, no, no sensation suddenly became like, yes, 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 yes. I am the fucking universe. Right, and then I literally, like, in that moment, my eyes turned to the back, became completely illuminated, shot out energy, my fingertips broke open, shot out energy, and the universe cry just shot out light, and my head opened up, and my skull popped out, and my whole body just exploded. And it was like the, the, the superpower of, like, just millions of nucleus power blasts, which you realize in that moment that kind of energy sits within you. That's, that's the superpower of the universe. And all what stays is just your like, like uh, fetus position curled up energy body, which just starts to like, just completely like just expand. Like it, the, the, the power of that is literally it just like it lit I could see how this 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 little shed just lit up and had this ex this explosion and the trees and Topanga Canyon just got fucking vaporized and it just like the light went over L.A. every every building was like tick, 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 you know and 
like li- like pretty much like in Terminator: The Judgment Day. Yeah, or right. Like, or it's, or w- it's weird. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hanging on to the fucking chain link fence. Yeah, atomic it, bomb it, just yeah, atom- of energy. Like, yeah, yeah. And then well, it, and funnily enough, an atom- atomic bomb. It's it's, it's atoms. It, yeah, it's yeah. tiny atoms. Yeah, yeah. That's it, the energy it, it produces. Exactly. It's just like, and it, and it. I could see. I still have this memory of, of um, the light just like racing over the ocean and next thing I saw was like tiny little earth in space going like poof <laughs> and then the next moment I saw is that that light just spread through the galaxy and just vaporized everything living cr- every living creature in the galaxy or h- fuck knows how far it <laughs> went but I could see the tiniest living being the tiniest spirits going like ha and it just uploaded with me into the higher consciousness on that point but the thing is we we believe we only have one perspective right well we have we can have several at the same time so i was at the same time when this happened i was sitting in front of this i was this tiny guy and there was this some sort of not real like entity but i could feel its present and it was literally having my book and it's like so this is you and it just opened up and looked in, in it and said like, well, insecurity, blah, 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 here and there. And then and I was like, we don't need that. Ripped the page out. And you're like, yeah, I didn't really need that. That's, wow. that's I, don't even, I don't even understand that this is even here, you know, like, pff. and then the first couple of pages are just like that. And you feel like, fuck, yeah, I don't need that shit. Nothing can stop me. And then it gets to the point where, it's, where it says like something you really want in your a need in your personality something you really define with it's like oh the uh like for example your talent or whatever like your the the expression of this and this and this and like how you do things and then and then it's just and you're like wait 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 you know and from that point on it it starts to be super super painful to be happy because suddenly you don't want anything anymore you don't need anything you detach and it and it hurts and that on the the last page is like just the the knowledge of and that's that's what many people say what we are like what it, it starts with i am this is enough for knowing of of the knowledge of my exper- of of my experience in this world of my existence but that is gone that is gone and then when everything was gone i was up there in pure light in life after death in heaven in like the higher consciousness connected to everything but nothing there was nothing i was just so white i was not but i did not even exist the word i the perception of myself and i was but i was able for a tiny second maybe not even a second but to manifest myself to I again through only one feeling and that is the pure like the the greatest the one power in the universe the one which contains spirit the one that's the most ultimate feeling of love you can only experience in death yeah so I don't need to go deeper into that <coughs> experience, but when I came back, I was like, he was like, how do you feel? <laughs> and the first thing I looked at him and I was like, I love you. Yeah. And he laughed at me and I was like, I know that you do. And then I, I took his head and like this, you know, no, no boundaries, nothing anymore. Not, not even, nah, nah, no fuckery. I just took him and like, just third eye to third eye. And I said like, no, 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 you don't understand. And I mean, he did, but it's like, you have done your job. I am free. And suddenly this came up like, a, like a, 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 a mudra thing out of nothing. I had no idea what, it, what I did, but I could feel. It's like the moment in Matrix when Neo wakes up after he gets shot and he just takes a deep inhale and exhale and the Matrix just bends, you know? And it's literally like that. It's like, the room bent with my breath and when i walked out i could see the matrix flowing in the trees it's not green it's gold it's just gold flow of energy and you're like like a little kid it's like ah the rocks the leaves the trees the ants 
ah, you know, and you suddenly, I tell you one thing, depression never came back. It was gone. Yeah, really. It was gone. I never was depressed. I was on a new path. And it was like, you go there for 20 minutes. I was 25 minutes I was in, in that journey. But you were there, in, like, from your perception, you are there for 10,000 years downloading right. universal knowledge. Yeah. What, what happens after is, for me now, two years of integration and, and uh, just experiencing what, what happens next and what my body does and how I can clear out things. And, and it started with, like literally the next day, I started to clean up my studio, was very happy the first time. Yeah. And I turned on my playlist and there's this, this album popped up. I have listened to that album since I was probably 15. Tool, you know? This Tool album, no, that, that, that actually is from a little later, but it doesn't matter, it was a Tool album. And I don't know what happened, but from like some mosh pit kind of move, mo movement, like just like whatever, I started to do Tai Chi. Right. <laughs> right mate let's get into that but dude already i mean i was just there like just listening to the uh to the journey and um yeah fucking hell bro like <clears throat> i want to do something similar <laughs> i really do for what i feel but the, here's the thing right it sounds as if you kind of went into it i feel like i would be going into it almost now like you know hearing stories like yours mm. and almost being expectant of what's mm. going to happen mm. so i don't know but i still find it so interesting so can we before we get to the tai chi because that's r another thing that just is uh you know really really interesting to talk about just unpacking a little bit the experience because so from my point of view from what you're telling me you know the clear kind of message is that you are being shown the say you're walking into this uh, experience kind of thinking all right i'm this guy i'm nitros you know that, that that's what i write i've you know um this is the country i was born in this is the language i speak these are my points of view and you know you everyone or, or the majority of people build this kind of uh, rigid identity yeah that you believe in right but it sounds like what's happening when you have an experience like that yeah is that that that's what the shaman's talking about. Are you ready to die? Are you ready to see that that idea, this idea of yourself that you have mm -hmm. is an illusion? It's a construct. Completely. We will obliterate that. Mm -hmm. you, you will die. You will literally experience that mm -hmm. ego, that identity dying and melting away in front of you. Mm -hmm. And then it sounded like you, you, you went into that nothingness, that mm -hmm. death. Mm -hmm. But then you had the, the, the extra realization of like, oh, hang on a minute everything the whole fucking shebang is one thing is one energy and then you've got this like light experience that pretty much sounded like one of your paintings anyway bro <laughs> it's true yeah um but that shit fascinates me yeah. bro this idea that like because it's true you know it's like like my name's jimmy that's not my name that's a nickname i've given myself based on my birth name which is james that's not my name mm -hmm. that's a name that two people you know who had sex gave me right you know i don't like that what what's what about this is me my skin color isn't me it's yeah. handed down from two other people who got it from you know millions of people before them like nothing about me is worth hanging on to is it <laughs> or but you know what i mean nothing but here's the thing because i dude it's not like i and it goes back to what you were saying actually yeah. there is a big difference between knowledge and wisdom mm -hmm. You can, um, you can be like a fucked up politician, right? And have the same amount of ego as like a yoga expert, you know? You, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you can have just as much ego within something that appears to be spiritual. I get caught in that trap the whole fucking time, man. You know, because dude, we can have these conversations and I feel like, yeah, yeah, I'll get off on it. But, but, yeah. but I'm getting off on, Jimmy, <laughs> yeah. well done. You're really understanding this shit. <laughs> But bro, I'll come back to addiction, you know, like like drugs or drink or fucking social media. Mm. So yeah, man, like <laughs> look, bathe me in your light, bro, because like clearly something isn't still needs to click for me. Well, first of all, what we what we gotta understand is uh, there's a reason why we have an ego, and just by just trying to realize that 
you'd come to peace with it. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, what does my ego want? What does my true self want? It's like, it's a, it, like generally, like what is very important to understand is it's all about balance. You know, ego takes over, you're going to be fucked because you're going to attract a lot of fucked up shit. Right. Uh, dude, since that experience, it's like, like, you know, you have a voice in your head. You know, it's that the thing you perceive as, as you. But I, like, after that experience, I had two. And they're like, like the ego says, well, now we're going to do this and this and this and this, you know, and feel really good about it. And the other one says, like, well, hang on a minute, just chill the fuck out. You know, <laughs> like, well, is that, is that really going to be good for you? You know? So it's like you suddenly have the voice of your true self, like, looking out for you that the other guy just doesn't take over. It's literally like those two angels on the side, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so um, I was very confused by that in the begin in beginning, I have to say. Um, also like I, I had the feeling I suddenly I opened up so hard that I could feel everything like literally like two weeks later I went on a date with a girl in San Francisco and I was like I could feel and read all her emotions and her pain and it was like I was sitting there and I was like and it was like I was re reading her mind you know and it's like so how is that huh like now you're sitting here with me apparently um cheating on your boyfriend or about to cheat on your boyfriend and she's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know and then you're also you're not afraid anymore also you know what like, did she say mate? You know, she was just blown away you know like it was like oh shit um, well probably in af after another hour she left <laughs> <laughs> mate called out by Nitros's third eye just but, like but in the beginning yeah. it was like I had no idea what I, I, I'm doing with this you know and um um and um, the thing is, like, also the ego. Again, you think as an artist, I'm like, oh, fuck all this, the graffiti scene, like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, wow, I just paint for myself, you know, like, blah, blah, I do graffiti for myself. Bullshit. But you, you, you tell that yourself. And also as, an, as the art, in the first place, of course, that's something you feel deeply you do for yourself because it wants to come out. Yeah. Um, and... Um, and five months into it, I was literally painting for my show, the, the, the Endless Layer of Still Consciousness in San Francisco. And I sit in my studio and I realize, hold on. I'm actually painting for everyone else, not for me. I'm, I had this deep feeling that I'm maybe a messenger or something. I have a message to spread. Yeah, wow. And I was already connecting to that. And when I go back and like, old Instagram post I'm already talking about energy and how people perceive my work and the ones who perceive like let's say I'm painting a mural of a dissected shark or whatever and people come up to me and be freaked out about it and, and, and fearful and, I, and then there's someone else coming up and say like fuck yeah mate fucking love it you know and I was like I'm gonna get along with that guy <laughs> you know? and it's like it has so much to do with the conditioning of our society as well um, it's like clearly like um, a skeleton represents death. A skeleton doesn't represent death at all. It's just in 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 our religion, we, that's what they teach us to be fearful of God. There's nothing to be afraid of of God. Sorry, like God loves us even if he does fucked up shit. You know, he has a, like the universe has a fucked up sense of humor. But uh, it's, it's, it always knows each outcome is just going to be good for you at some point, And it's just sitting there. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> or I didn't. <laughs> but in the end, like, like how people, if people are so afraid already with one of my murals, like how afraid are they even to live? And that's the next thing. And, I've, and, and I realized that I have been doing this all along. I... I faced myself with death already since I was a little kid. You can read that in every fucking interview of the last 10 years. Death was present with me, always. How I grew up, how I, how my, my, what my parents taught me, whatever, like the whole hunting family thing, whatever, you know, it's, it's been there always. And, um, and um, I was never scared of it. I understood already as a, as a three or four year old, I was like, how beautiful death can be. And it actually, death again feeds life. 
by us eating it or if it's a, a, a like 500 maggots eating that little baby sheep or us does it really matter yeah it's, right it's you know so now we're going really deep into it but it is so important in this whole spiritual context um, death is not the end death is not the end but people are if you're so afraid of death then you are more afraid of actually living and to be your true self and go out there and I'm like I am enjoying my life to the fullest because I am not afraid of doing what I'm here to do and at that, that point I realize oh yeah I have just I'm just about to flip from being that fearful to to literally going to that to that realization into integra integrating the knowledge of me doing exactly that for people for like yo i'm putting this out there whatever you do this with this information of my artwork what you feel the emotion which gets triggered inside of you which is again and probably some deep energy sitting in your cellular memory uh, that that's why this is there because it needs to get triggered it needs to get out you need to it's literally what what people the first thing people tell you about spirituality is like uh yin yang you know like darkness and light and there clearly there is no light without darkness right and if you're not if you're like just like oh light 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 over there the darkness is evil like we, let's not look at the darkness the darkness is going to close in and only when you look into darkness you find the light and the deeper you look into darkness the more of the light you find and then you're like fear fear is literally only only the path to it's, it's like star wars <laughs> you know? well yeah i mean and, <laughs> and a lot of that you know a lot of um stories and narratives feed off this oh, idea oh, you know yeah. probably yeah. probably all of them yeah, all but of them yin yang is um is is real interesting um i was listening to some alan watts oh yeah a couple <laughs> of weeks ago man. I, yeah yeah uh, incredible but all about y yin and yang and uh, like I, you know i've heard a few of he's got a few like um lectures set of seminars on that subject but he breaks it down in a brilliant way which is exactly what you're talking about there you know they're opposites yes but they're really kind of one thing yeah you know because you cannot have life without death what, what would it come out of you can't have light yeah. without dark if mm. you if you only have light you don't know that you've got light so you've got nothing so yeah. light and dark if you only well, have dark yeah if, if, it, if it's just light like you're not gonna find any more light yeah you know like hmm. exactly so, if you if you ha somehow were like uh, you know a point of perspective or a point of consciousness within absolute light um, you wouldn't know that you're in light. And so if you were in absolute dark, it would and essentially thing, feel like the same thing. you stop developing. Yeah. And the darkness is only a tool for us to move forward. Yeah, yeah. Well, and look, that, that, when I kind of started like, thinking about that or feeling that, I found it really like cathartic, therapeutic, because it makes, like, it makes a lot of sense that you know, there's a big part of the Hindu religion, which almost is that like, and I, bro, I, I will assassinate this recollection of how it goes, <laughs> but the Hindus kind of believe in like these stages of, of reality where they do have utopia. Yeah, yeah. You know, they play Grand Theft Auto on God mode. They can yeah. do anything they want. It is all like almost, it's all, the trajectory is always up because God realizes that that um, it is fragmented into, you know, many different little points of perspective, many different people, and mm. everything is just kind of, it gets really fucking boring, <laughs> right? <laughs> and that's reductive, obviously, because no one wants to hear that, like, you know, if a family member dies of cancer, well, that's all part of the game, son. Yeah, yeah, but, right? it, but it kind of is, yeah. and it's like you, you cannot have pure utopia with, with zero death. Yeah. Number one, it just wouldn't work. It couldn't exist. Number two, we, we get sick of it. <laughs> sick, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Is it, I mean, like... All the story in the Bible, for example, let's, if we want to wanna just quote that, I mean, uh, apparently we're in, we, like, humanity was in paradise and we didn't accept it, then, that, then that's the point when we got kicked out. Yeah, right. It's pretty much the same. It's literally just an allegory. Yeah. But, mate, so when we first started this uh, com riveting conversation, 
And I was like, all right, bro, you know, straight in. Let's yeah. start at the fucking licking the frog <laughs> or smoking the frog's crystals. <laughs> you were like, yeah, cool, we can start there. Yeah. But alluding to maybe, you know, that obviously this your journey kind of starts um, like way earlier. Were you alluding to maybe like, tr- like if you don't mind talking about it, like traumas, events, experiences that might have led you to that point? Because I am interested in where, I don't know how you describe it, but where this like feeling of like... Uh, you know, just not feeling at ease, feeling a bit toxic, like how that built up, mm. uh, you know, and where that came from. Well, I, I, that clearly I wasn't really conscious about it. I knew, I was very conscious about the anger, as, as I said before, where I was like, I don't know what to do with it. You know, it will clear out eventually. I'm on my path. Uh, but, um, hmm. So first of all, there's a bunch of things to understand. And this is this is where it gets really trippy, and, and probably a lot of people are like, "Now he has completely fucking." No, they're it, fucking right? with us, mate. They're going all the way through, man. There's no getting off this. Uh, lock the train doors, Emmett. No one's getting off. <laughs> Let's go. Um, when you think about, yeah, where does it start? The journey is, is already the, the deep question. When you go really deep, you right. see you see way way beyond. Uh, from like, where's your starting point in this life? And I already said it, where's the starting point in this life? I, I very much remember one of my earliest memories. And I was in this little crib, my, my parents, uh, my, mom, my parents' house, and there were already like, you know, how does a little crib look like? Mostly like, like a little, little cage. Right, yeah. And I remember, and I remember, and especially now since the meditation, I have been like clearing out so much ego, which literally just like blinds you and I remember I was probably a couple of weeks old at that point uh, that I have I had the immediate uh, like perception of a prison of a, just, just a jail cell I'm like mom I can't get out you're over there in the kitchen but I can't move any further yeah so I already had the feeling of being I need to free myself. I need to, and I, I already know that I had that in many lifetimes. But um, that is something which very much fast manifested with me my whole life. It's like, it's like you, you, you feel like you need to free yourself of how you're, you cannot even like, you know, in the first, let's say 20 years, you cannot even like grasp it or put it in words because you don't understand. Mm. But you already have the feeling that you need to free yourself of how your the, your family f- thinks and the, how they live your their life, and because you like little, you're little, this little kid, and those are your goddesses, your gods and goddesses, your mom and your dad and your grandma. It's like how they live life. This is how you're supposed to live your life, apparently, right? And but some, something deep inside is, I was like, I don't, know, I don't really cope with that, you know. And so that is one thing. And then you get into school, you know, school system in Europe. Dude, conditioning, 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 like literally with grades, just making mindless sheep out of you. And like any, anyone, especially in America, this is really hard. Anyone who's like thinks differently and doesn't work that way, just like take some pills, you know, and people get fucked yeah, up right. so, so young. So, so zombies, look, I mean, look what's going on right now. It's fucking zombie land, you know? But um, so we, we, we get conditioned. I was always like, <laughs> you know, but it was really hard. It was really hard to find my way out. And only when, when I, and then also with kids, with friend, friendships where you get like, kind of like, like disappointed because you opened and you're like, have this open heart to everyone and you tell things because you're like, yo, we are friends. And then you realize they use it against you and you, they are not your f- real friends. And then like you you feel alone and you're like, why am I, ha- why do I have to feel so alone? You know? And, so this is, this is, and this is probably the part where I got deep into drawing and painting. Where I was like, I was like that, that was me. You know, that, that came back to me. Like I had a conversation with the paper and the pencil and, and with the paint, you know. I feel like that already did like a, a huge turn for me where I knew, okay, I kind of like sensed the path. Mm. Um, but so school and then, and then like relationships, early relationships. Like stuff like that, you know, 
and uh, which is just like like you want to be with someone who understands you, like where you can f be free and open. But the only reason why those young chicks are with you is because you're the, the, the cool guy. You know, they don't, they are not with, with you because of you and how awesome you are. It's just about them. And like, ah, you know, like I'm with that guy. Yeah. He's kind of hot, you know, he fucks me right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, just, it's, it's, it's just about that. And they believe that is something like pure love. But like, this is something also there like free like let's let's get out of the like let's just just explode you know and i i i have not understood that for a very long time uh i always ask myself like why are those chicks breaking up with me i never had like we never had a huge bad fight they all really lo like me like then then insecurities happen it was like self-worth and stupid shit like codependency you know like relationship stuff and you kind of like start mirroring the same bullshit as you know because your god and your g the goddesses have lived that for you you know it's all just energy it just bounces back and forth right and then the first patterns set in you know and then like clearly what happens then and this is where it gets interesting it triggers patterns not necessarily from this life it 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 triggers patterns your spirit has brought energetically with 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 him into this vessel and cellular like it puts that information into your cells and cellular memories and when you constantly get backstabbed by some friends or some some chicks or whatever you might have a little sting back here in, in your back and it feels like a blade is sticking in there because you got probably got stabbed in the back from someone you really loved or liked uh, maybe 1,500 years ago. It's the same kind of energy. So you're kind of replaying patterns yeah. through lives. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> ju but just quickly, right, because I, I'm completely on board with that. Um, but, and again, this isn't a belief because here's the thing, man. Really, ultimately, what I find fun about life is um, I can just kind of... Uh, you know, think about whatever I want. And I have some favorite ideas about mm. what's going on. But ultimately, I guess, I don't know for a fact. But is that what you kind of think, right, with life? That, let's say, let's take planet Earth. Do you think that, um, you know, once you die or before you were born, like, everything's playing out on this same kind of planet Earth again and again, and you're living lives on this planet Earth. Because I, I can get with that. That makes sense to me. But I also kind of like the idea that beyond my life now and, uh, you know, previous to my birth, who knows what that reality was, where it was, what it looked like. Do you know what I mean? Almost like I could imagine a scenario where when I die here, and this is, this is very grandiose and probably quite narcissistic. When I die here, this whole reality, you know, which ultimately, because it's not narcissistic, because everything is me as we've, uh, <laughs> we've figured out, this whole reality just crumbles and something unimaginable, unfathomable, unfath mm. uh, you know, is, is what I move into, or not even I, but do you know what I'm saying? But when you're talking about kind of like, um, you know, like uh, patterns mm -hmm. through multiple lives, mm -hmm. Is that the kind of like, is that what you believe or is that your kind of like favorite idea or is that something you can feel? No, mm. I, I was here on planet Earth, you know, a hundred years ago, 200 years ago, fucking a thousand, a billion. Well, I don't know about a billion, but... Um, what was it? What was around a billion years ago? Yeah, what was going on there? I don't <laughs> know, maybe it was like a dinosaur. But always human <laughs> experiences or can, you know, do you ever feel like... Um, that you're kind of tapped into like <laughs> vegetation, trees, butterflies. See again, um, it's energy, uh, and we 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 bring the energy of um, of our old self like into the new. So it sounds very like whatever fucked up shit we did. If we do talk about dharma or karma or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, it's still the energy of a human being. So I don't, I don't think we are becoming a butterfly just to die, just because we did some fucked up shit. I don't think that, right, right. Uh, that's not how it works. Um, the energy is still like, all right, the human being, 
with this and this and this and this and this and this trauma condition, karma, whatever, all the, the package. I, the thing is more about in what kind of situation are we born into? Like, the thing is when you, let's say you've been like this very wealthy dude, like, and you've been a fucking asshole and you did some really bad shit to people, clearly bad karma, like bad juju, right? Yeah. And you die. I can bet with you, you, you're going to be reborn in, in a really, really bad condition. And that could be, so here's the thing, like they always tell us, like you go to hell or you go to heaven. Heaven is nothing else than just the afterlife where after, when you die, you go there and eventually you're going to come back. But hell exists on earth. You need to go through hell to clear the bad shit you have done. So, so some people who go through the gnarliest shit in their life, like they're, they're there for a reason. It's punishment. But there's also some which never gonna come back because they're just blocked of reincarnation, for example. But we, now we are way deep into this. No, I love it. I, I fucking <laughs> love it, mate. So you like, but again, because again, I like the idea, and it, these are all just ideas that I like, so I don't have a fucking clue. <laughs> um, but I like the idea though that, and again, I mean, it's hard not to <laughs> say offensive shit, but if you take the idea of God, not like a religious God, like, you know, God, let's, let's label like everything, yeah. which a lot of people do, everything as God, yeah. that bad people could be nothing more than pawns in God's game. Because, oh. because we're not looking at it like as singular, like this person is bad. It could be no, 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 God, God has... It's, it's again, it's perception. It's perception. Yes. But, but, right, so just to finish that little point like it would be like you know god has fragmented itself his self herself into a million uh, like seven billion people on a planet fragmented just to just so he's not sitting there <laughs> in nothingness being bored as hell you know he's like okay i'll create i'll just create this uh i'll create this world and get lost in it as well that's a massive part of, like the, the hindus believe mm. so they you know i think part of like the hindu belief is that They've lived the reality where they are aware that they are God fragmented and mm -hmm. they can do whatever the fuck they want. Mm -hmm. But that's when they're like, but this is boring because I have all, you know, I know all the answers. Mm -hmm. I know all the outcomes. So the only way to really love mm -hmm. this game is to split yourself into, you know, seven billion pieces and not know that you're playing a game. And, you know, inevitably here we are sitting here talking about this. Yeah, it, it almost it almost sounds like sounds like uh, something has happened in our evolution, which gave us free will. <laughs> right yeah and, and with free will it just gave us the false ego yeah it, yeah yeah you know but why the like because ego gets a lot of bad rap right um, yeah it, it fucking does i mean what is the point of the, so i guess the ego was there at the beginning to it's so that you can have that conversation with yourself to like get out of the way of trouble i guess right mm -hmm. but then at some point um it's kind of gone or we, or we you know the, the 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 human that has the ego has kind of let it let it run wild i mean i remember reading an eckhart toll book where he's like the first people to kind of like um evolve that kind of consciousness that can where you are aware of yourself so you could describe like a dog as like not really being able to have that conversation with themselves where they can place themselves in the in the past mm. oh i was doing this they're just present I'm oh, at the yeah. beach, I'm at the beach. Um, but but <laughs> Eckhart Tolle would say that like the first people that kind of, you know, evolved that sense, they'd literally shit themselves when they heard their own voice in the head because they thought it was God talking to them. Like mm -hmm. they'd be like, that guy's a bit of a prick. Who said that? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Bro, I don't fucking know where I was going with that point. Oh, yeah. but, but do you know what? That's interesting in itself though because I often find as well, you know how like scientifically... If you're looking for like the smallest thing on earth, so you think you found it at an atom and then you get a smaller instrument and you realize that you can keep going. And it's almost like the universe or life or energy is playing a trick on us. Like, mm. all right, you invent something new. I'll show you a million different ways that it mm. can go and you will never catch the end. When I get into these conversations, I often feel like that, that I that I enter a fucking mirrored, a house of mirrors. And yeah, suddenly yeah. I'm yeah. like... Mate, oh, okay, maybe I'm not. <laughs> maybe I'm not even supposed to be talking about this. You know, it's like I can't but find that, the that, answer. That's, that's pretty much what it is, you know. And and you you just said it. It it becomes suddenly like just a thought. 
becomes super psychedelic because the 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 possibilities just open into endless possibilities. It's just like yeah, yeah. And you're like, and it's literally like just your thought pattern starts to be like a psychedelic trip. Yeah. And you're like, oh, what, what am I doing here now? I'm I'm not even supposed to talk about this, or am I? You know, like you're already like, conf you know, you know what happened? It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so so um, it's really interesting because I have a lot of those thoughts, especially like when I when I like think into my work and how I do some st do things. It's exactly what's happening, and I'm like, am I tripping right now? <laughs> you know. So um, um, but that helps it when 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 you go into some psychedelic experience and the fear comes up. Yeah. You know, it was like, Whoa, because you see all the possibilities, you know, like, fuck, I'm seeing all the possibilities and I see all the outcome and like the possible outcome and you focus probably on the worst outcome, uh, then you shit yourself. Yeah, right. Yeah. But the thing, the, 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 the important part is you can't do anything about it. Yeah, yeah. And, and in that moment, as soon as you understand, it's like, hey, that's right. like letting go dying before you die the key to life yeah. is to it's die like, before you yeah, die you know, you're like whatever because you if you see a possibility which is really bad and you want to change it it yeah. probably happens only because you try to change it so changing right. anything is not even a is not even a, an option it's just like i had like last winter when i started i started uh um, my so i came back to la from like loads of traveling in november and beginning like around Christmas, I uh, started my my little uh, silence retreat. Oh, myself. really? Yeah, yeah. I just locked myself in the studio, like stocked up with food and 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 just like I just me and painting, like nothing else, no internet, no music, nothing. Yeah, I could do about four days. I was crying like a baby. I was crying like a baby. <laughs> Do not mean to laugh, mate. It's just the way <laughs> no, you no, tell it. Like, it's the way you tell it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's just like it was just like tons of shit come uh, came up. And, and what what is that though? It's just purely because you don't have um, y you know the external stimulus of like it's oh like, well I'll ignore what I think because I'm watching fucking Netflix or I'm talking to my friend. You just had to sit with your. If, as soon as you become still, especially after like a long, like your whole life not being still at yeah. all, and then like having this this super blast uh, um, experience, uh, and you you like after two years, I finally got to a point where like you know what, fuck it, I sit down and see what happens, and that's the point when you really start looking at yourself. I already did that uh, like before, but like it started to speed up when I really was like. Okay, I meditate, I eat, I jerk off, I paint, and that's it. You know, I don't see anyone. Dude, after four days, New Year's Eve, completely by myself, mm. you pick up shit. And it's like, you're already so open, and I could literally hear and see this, this, like, you think it's your fault, and this is exactly, you know, you think you are the only one in there, suddenly you start connecting to a thought process where you can identify it's not yours and this there's this like like stress oh, like oh no 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 why are you doing this to me and i was like fuck you bitch you know it's like this conversation and i could literally see how some dude just pulls a gun on his wife you know and i'm like fuck like whatever wherever this just happened out there just leave me alone i don't need that information but it just flies in you know, and the same thing happened to me over and over again during, during my, uh, first of all, I recognize it in my dreams when it comes, where I'm suddenly having a, a thought process of a woman who has like, like clearly women's issues, like her, her period or whatever. And I'm like, wait a second, that's not me. You know, it's like, who is this person? Or during a, a sound healing session, I transferred into some Mexican chick who clearly had an existential, existential crisis and she was, had those thoughts about work and she looked into her sink filling up a, a plastic bottle of water and she had this, she was in her, yeah, in her kitchen and I could see the window and she was looking out to her crappy car and she had this pink white top on it. I could see it all. I was there. And then just the sound healing and then, then I came back and I'm like, wait a second, where was I? You know, and you start traveling. It's pretty much, it's pretty similar as, as like astral traveling, I would say. Uh, but 
but it's like as soon as you become still like the information comes in and the next step is you got to learn to also quiet that shit mm. uh, and I'm sure like with meditation you like when you meditate it's, I mean, it's literally the only way to quiet like to silence the noise or like kind of like let me tune out you know I, I, I just go into like a different thing and then when you when you fine tune into yourself to this is when the doors open and this is this is when you when you can when you can see like it's like you're going into inside of your body you're not like receiving from the outside anymore as you're used to third eye you like transfer the energy inwards and like uh, clearly like pay attention to the breath and and where where the energy like how strong the energy is in my root chakra and in my sacral chakra and the solar plexus and the heart chakra and you feel the expansion slowly and like where where the attention goes and 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 then you just op start opening cells like cell information and like each each chakra each energy system of your body the rainbow I would say like from like red orange yellow green blue purple and magenta is responsible for the cell area in this and this body so i would say you can clearly you can go into it and it's like hello solar plexus so why are you not digesting the food i send you and then and then like eventually shit comes up shit comes up and you see it and then you realize you for example right now you know there's been many but suddenly you find yourself somewhere in the mountains of japan uh you know wielding uh the magic sword <laughs> until Fuck the yeah. final battle between heaven and hell approaches you know and and um like literally like Samurai Jack, for example, like fighting against the Shogun <laughs> and stuff like that. And then you realize, okay, you have, you carry so much guilt because you have probably murdered thousands of people and yourself, solar plexus, seppuku or harakiri. And, and, or, you know, like, and then you've killed your family because of your anger and your guilt and you have carried that shit with you. That is really interesting, right? Because, um, so, you know, for you, that... Uh, right so i've had like therapy before mm -hmm. and i guess you know being again really reductive but it's like the kind of the point of the therapy is to try and uh, go into pr and process like past traumas but from this life right mm -hmm. me as a kid you know not getting attention not having an emotional connection with someone, trying to understand that and process it. Now, when I've gone to therapy, that I felt that and understood that and thought, yeah, that feels correct. You know, mm -hmm. that feels like the right thing to do. If I mm -hmm. can, if I can go into this traumatic experience and I can kind of begin to like not understand it, but process it, feel it, forgive it, get mad at it, whatever it is, that. <clears throat> some kind of healing will take place mm. and then maybe I'll change. And for me, man, the way that I could always tell if I'm acting out is through just getting addicted to shit. But what's interesting about what you're saying about that, you know, maybe that premise being correct, but just not stopping mm. in like, you know, this life of, of Jimmy, mm. but going into, you know, a continuous um, set of lives or maybe even mm. all lives at the same time I find really interesting because again with that therapy bro it's like I've I've got to a point where you know before where I'm like I, I, it's not happening mm. I get it I really feel like I get it and I'm with you therapist mm. I'm fucking on board mm -hmm. and I feel like I'm going into it but I'm still going out and you know getting smashed I still have that pain that I'm trying to remedy with you know whatever kind of self-medication so so what i have learned is of course there's there's like let's say let's just call it past life trauma yeah there you go and and then there is dna trauma and um um i have been observing clearly my family as well deeply and and i have i know like energetically i have i have worked out that so question, are you the firstborn? No. 
So you're second born? Yeah. So you're connected to your mother energetically. Do you feel that? Um, well, um, unpack that for me a little bit. Why is that? No, but you, do, do you, would you say that you're connected to your mom more than you, than, to your dad? Yeah, I guess, yeah, I yeah, guess yeah. so. Yeah. Um, so, do you have a, so you have an older brother? Sister. Sister. Yeah. And she is connected to your dad. I mean, yeah, I guess you, yeah. Could, I yeah. guess you could say that. <laughs> so, the thing is, we, it, it seems like as we would get the shitty stuff, the first one gets the shitty stuff from the, from the firstborn, the second one gets the shitty stuff from... Wait, no, the firstborn gets the shitty stuff from the dad, second from the mom. And how people in a relationship mirror, it's going to be the same thing. So you see your dad out of the, your male perspective uh, like your mom does. So if your mom really loves your father, you're going to love your father as well. But if your mom and your dad have some shit going on, you're going to like, fuck you, dad. You know, it's, it's, it's like that. Um, and what if your dad, like, what if your dad, which mine didn't, but what if your dad kind of, like, left or something at birth? I mean, obviously, there's still a lot of trauma there, but is that what you're saying? The, the, the bulk of that, like, abandonment trauma would go on to the firstborn. Yeah. So did you leave before... Uh, like or did he leave? No, or, my dad, my dad didn't. But it so just, when say, you said that, I just okay. thought, well, what if so the dad's say, not fucking like, there? It's most likely if if uh, the father leaves. Well done for sticking around, by the way, Dad. <laughs> Appreciate it, mate. <laughs> let's say, let's say, um, um, uh, the abandonment of the mother definitely projects to the fr uh, the second born. So the b abandonment is also deeply felt in the second born, probably more than in the first. And it's really interesting. So I've observed that. Where do I read about that? What, like, what is this kind of? Where's that theory come from? I don't know. I don't. I don't read that stuff. It's oh. just literally. <laughs> uh, it's literally what I'm observing with the flow of things. Okay. Like it's, and I've I've experienced it's not, just because first of all, I was like, is it this, is this only me? Yeah, yeah. And then I realize I've like it's literally unfolding in front of me, and then and I I confront people with with their issue. And then, you know what that, what it is? Because your dad does this and this, you know? Like, uh, and then everyone is like, oh shit. So it's like, it's literally, but I think, I, I believe you can, that's like a, uh, some sort of common knowledge. I, I, I mean. Yeah, I'm, you've probably picked it up yeah. somewhere. Also like, I must say, I'm, I'm like, kind of like cheating here a little bit. I do, I've been working with, um, it's more, uh, more a, f a medium than a therapist. But when, when, when I met her first, which was deep in the phase of suffering, yeah. she was more like my therapist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then, and the funny thing is then I did the, the DMT and then I, I, I went to her again and I was like, yo, I got to tell you what fucking happened. And she was like, stop. <laughs> she was like, stop. I was like, I can see that you have understood the flow of energy and you know you saw what the universe is really doing. Now we can do, we start doing the Bro, real work. I love this, mate. What, <laughs> what I imagine, right, is that you were going to this therapist who was like, you know, great, but like a, like a head mistress. Yeah. And then you suddenly came back going and doing all your fucking drugs. Dude. And she got her cape out and went, right, <laughs> Dude, let, the, let's the, get into this. The, the, the funny thing is she literally looks like the Oracle in the Matrix. <laughs> I even call her, I even call, like maybe 10 years. Bro, ten, I forget what the Oracle looks like, like a kind of uh, yeah, older, yeah, yeah. older white lady. Yeah, no, she, no, no, is she a like, black lady? I think so. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I I remember and I then, can see and, her and then can she has her. like curly hair and she's constantly smoking cigarettes yeah know? yeah they go to her like apartment yeah, yeah, and there's like yeah, yeah. kids she, or someone dude, literally the same thing she makes fucking cookies for me and smokes cigarettes like like a crazy crazy person bro maybe I need your therapist <laughs> your, your therapist slash uh, uh, what did you call her oracle a med a med medium yeah, I call her the oracle yeah, yeah she, she loves it she's she the oracle <laughs> um, so but so yeah she she has definitely um, 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 helped me a lot on that path and uh, I have definitely understood a lot and uh, yeah now like she's literally she's not just my like she's this 50 year old woman and she's uh, like one of my best friends now. yeah yeah it's really connected it's, it's really dope yeah um, and uh yeah it's um it's it's been it's been a hell of a ride for sure and um and it had like i'm i'm, I'm right now where am i where i'm now is like i have i still had to clear shit out in my throat chakra the last couple of months which also was deeply rooted in in in, in uh, relationship issues uh which uh i carried along around for a long time and uh 
and understood, also understood that it's actually a past life situation and not created in this life. Uh, I had to clear that out and since then my whole system like just boosts back up and I feel way better and way healthier. And then, um, and then like, uh, like I, I, let's say I finally like came to a point where I was able to align my chi. So every, every chakra is flowing and the energy is just, just like boom, 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 boom. And I can feel it and it's just beautiful and it just puts you in that state of presence and happiness and you're like, ah, this place is clear, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, uh, and, and you're like, yeah, you know? And then, and then I was like, I, w I felt like, um, you know, what? It's like if there's still something deep in there, which you can feel that, there, I mean, there's always more to clear out, but just to be he a healthy, like physically healthy person again, I was like, uh, maybe I'm ready for a real deep mushroom trip. Fuck and, yeah. And I, 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 I never had that before. Never I, done mushrooms? Well, no, not really. <coughs> it's me, me either. No, I, I've been uh, microdosing a little bit. Yeah. Uh, which kind of puts you in a, a very nice state of focus for your work, but uh, it's in, you don't really need it, right? It's like it's it's just uh, for the ones who don't want to go deep. <laughs> um, uh, so let's just say it wanted like it wanted me to go there. It's like I thought about it, and then my friend said, "Like, look, uh, I, I have to do this. Maybe you can do some shrooms, and we, you, you're just there, so I'm not like completely alone." And I'm like, "If you're too scared to be alone, it's already there's so much fear already." But okay, I come by. I only microdosed. I could feel the energy being super strange, but I didn't really trip. And then, literally a couple of days later, something weird happened. Um, it was probably Wednesday, maybe three weeks ago or something um, the universe just like it was li I could literally feel the presence of something needed to happen for me right now it literally called me back into that realm so <laughs> funny the funny thing is how, how how I work and how I get science sometimes is in the, in the weirdest weirdest funniest way um, in that case I just go on tinder <laughs> or like some other some other stupid dating app f for whatever and i start talking to that chick and she checks out my instagram and sh and, sh and and says like so when are we going to trip <laughs> and i'm like holy <laughs> shit here it is and i'm like uh, i don't know i have to go to therapy tomorrow and then literally in that moment i get a text by my doctor and i was like well i had a little car accident today i'm not going to be able to do it and i'm like Okay, here it is. Time to, time so, to trip. So, so, literally in the evening, that chick came over and um, there was nothing going on. I was not even planning to go there anyway. Uh, uh, but we tripped. And I had probably, at that point, the most profound mushroom experience, clearly, uh, ever. And I was... And I, I, I entered some sort of realm where I could literally fly around from world to world uh, and, and kick out unneeded uh, traumatic beings like things I don't need anymore I was literally standing completely naked in this world of like let's say HR Giga and this dark in, in complete dark whatever craziness this dark creature comes here and I'm like you get the fuck out <laughs> you know you are not needed here anymore get the fuck out and, and what about the tinder girl she had a good, good oh, she time was, as well good, oh, good trip she, she was crying and I, I was <laughs> I was also I was I was I was also like damn I hope I'm not gonna pick up on her shit right now but I mate because you t t tell her to get out of the room like you did with your <laughs> no 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 with your DMT no, she was she friend. was, she was uh, in a, in a good distance she she had to let go of a lot of intense things yeah which was which was which was totally fine I I was like I'm like oh, I don't I just really don't want to put uh, like because as, as I said before at Christmas I was still like oh fuck. yeah 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 right but I through letting this past life thing with this relationship I had uh, uh, go I learned how to close like literally shut those things out and it um, and because of the chi was aligned like it literally I asked the mushroom uh, um, or the universe in that case like when I was in that trip I was like why is that even possible I can't shut that off and, and it to literally told me it's like because you aligned your chi and you're only only allowed in this realm with so much control and no with fear 
because you have aligned your chi and you ride the, the wave of the rainbow because you are the rainbow. And with uh, like the with the the power, to, it's like literally the chakra system is like a lock, and you unlock all of those, and it's like as soon as you get so the shroom the, um, the shroom you eat the shroom, the nervous the nervous system and and all those neurons in our second brain the gut takes uh, the psilocybin out. It shoots it. I could literally see it clearly because I know so much about anatomy. It's easier for me, but it 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 sucks it into the nervous system. It goes up your spine, goes into your brain. Your brain is doing things, and it and it goes back into your gut. So what happens here is this vibration, and it clearly and that totally makes sense, uh, unloads through the heart. So what in this world unloads? Like we are a vibration. So. The heart, with the power of creation of love, like the ultimate love, expands from here. And you, with what uh, psilocybin does is you step into a completely different vibration of your being. And as soon as you can access, and also when you need from the beginning, what is very important is the intention. So if you're like, I'm just gonna look what's going on, and maybe I clear out some traumas if I can. If you go in like that, it's totally fine. Yeah. And the thing is, and this, this is also what's gonna happen. And the next thing is I also knew is like, because I feel like what people do wrong a lot of times, and this brings us back to, to what we said in the beginning with acid and all those psychedelics, we're like, we're looking, we're looking for trippy things in our environment, into, in our outside world. But it's, a, it's totally wrong. The, the, the real experience happens inside. And if you're someone who meditates a lot and knows what's going on inside and like how to access a lot of things through that vibration, you close your eyes and you take a deep breath and it fucking happens. You are like there, like more visually as you can get into during the meditation, but you are in complete control. You come out, you open your eyes and like, oh, I'm just going to make some tea real quick, you know, like, that's all, that's all fine, like, there's no problem, it's kind of fun, you know. So, and then I, I was going back in there and I was just like, it's literally like realities, like, I was flipping through worlds and realities, so it's like, and they're all like, it's like I was in this library of like balls, rainbow balls, and because I had the key unlocked, like, I had the key with unlocking the chakras, I could go inside of those realities and say, get out of here, you know? Mate, it sounds like a lot of fun. It's so much fun. And you, it, it was, and this was really fun because there was a situation where I was like, just like laughing and like releasing some, something and I came out as like, yeah. And this, this, this chick asked me like, how is it going over there? <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm flying through the universe and all kinds of realities um, and every being there I meet has to do what I say and so I am God. And then I laughed, and then I realized, damn, this is, this is literally what every like, spiritual uh, teaching tells you in the begin with. But realizing that takes a very long time. Yeah. So I'm gonna stop now because <laughs> <laughs> I, we can definitely dive deep. No, bro, it's awesome, man. I mean, look, to switch it up slightly, um, yeah. tell me a little bit about the Tai Chi though. Just ever so slightly, because look, right, just to frame it for people listening. So a bunch of posts ago on your IG, I don't know how many posts ago, but there is an, an IGTV video of you doing some Tai Chi, which I just saw randomly and I was like, oh, sick. <laughs> and like just <laughs> does Tai Chi and you look pretty legit at it. But then it was Terry who was like, yeah, yeah, he like, that's not. I was like, oh, so he's like learned tai chi and he's like no he hasn't learned it yet. he's just doing his thing what like what's the story there man is so, that so the thing is so i had no idea i was just doing movements right I yeah was, so i got into and again it's all about vibration right it's it's like like i was so open after after this uh this uh five meo dmt experience and then I, I, I started to play Tool, like literally music I've been listening to since I was 15 years old. What is Tool, by the way? Isn't it like heavy metal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Also like a very spiritual context. Uh, Alex Gray has done all, like most of the covers. Right. And, um, and uh, yeah, it's, um, those guys are very, they know what they're doing. Yeah, for yeah. For sure. And I've been, I've, I've been a fan for a very long time. Again, didn't know why. Now I know. 
it's, I mean, it's clearly good music, but it's like literally the vibration. Which yes, yeah, it's, it's doing something to yeah, yeah. connecting. And, and I'm, I'm definitely not the only person. But um, um, so like weirdly, I, it was just what happened is like it just clicked. And from like this movement, I suddenly started to like... <sighs> And then it just came, you know, and I'm, I had no idea, like, and I sweated and I cried. I really could feel the emotions of my family and I, 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 I just held them and I was like on my knees crying like a baby because I felt like I was just releasing so much. Yeah. And, uh, and um, it made me feel really happy at that point. For, and I did it every day for one and a half hours uh, for like about eight months. Wow. And without, without even like realizing I looked like like a machine, my 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 whole muscle system in the back was just like built completely different. Really? Yeah, it just like cleared out so much stuff and this is what it does. So you you close your eyes and when you're like when your ego and all this storm is out of the way, you can clearly see your hands, but the, the matrix of your hands, you know, the energy system and then it's just like you're like, all right, whatever it does right now, you know? <laughs> Amazing, man. I mean, look, look, what I really love about that is that if you meet anyone these days who does yoga, they're only doing yoga because they know that this thing called yoga exists and this like plethora of moves exist and they can learn them, right? But at some point, someone had to go through what you went through with Tai Chi, with yoga, with whatever, maybe not as like overnight or, or you know, but someone had to, it's a concept, isn't it? It's like yeah. someone had to kind of have this urge to put their body in a certain position or move their body in a certain way. So I, I love the way that it's almost like you invented Tai Chi again. Well, the, the, thing again. Is, the, the, the thing is like, yeah, it, is it really Tai Chi what I'm doing? Like how many forms of Tai Chi exist? Qigong Tai Chi? Like for me, it gets it get it gets sometimes that fast that it actually looks like more like kung fu, right? Yeah. And they are all related, clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there is uh, hundreds of forms, and and um, the, my medium also she told me was like, yeah, we, like I have also this uh, this this um, form of tai chi. It's, it's like something different. It comes. It's it's more of, out of the. Of course, medicine. she has the oracle's got some like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She and and she and uh, super hybrid. And I'm like, well, I'm if I'm starting to do like this without thinking. Uh, I do this, I do it this way, and then I, I clearly, like, I did the fucking snake or whatever, you know. So, like, I had no idea. It's like, I had actually, I talked to Steiner, and I was like, I, I showed a video to Steiner, and he, he, and he was like, do you know that you're doing Tai Chi? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay. It's like, this is like this move, this move, this is like all classic, yeah. um, um, like, uh, Asian martial arts But, stuff. bro, that's what I'm saying, man. But, you know, when they, when, when, Tai Chi was kind of like became a thing they weren't doing it for fun right they weren't doing it to like create a commodity that they could sell they were doing what you were doing they were yeah. going this feels well, correct uh, this feels right clearing out stuck energies and every again everyone has this journey and everyone has his own way of clearing out things so I believe and that comes back to like conditioning schooling like okay you can like teach someone something but he still has to find his own way uh, everyone has his own way and like like I have not started like to go to a Tai Chi teacher yeah because I don't want to think it, like I don't want to think oh no I have to do this move like this and this cannot be like this I just want to get into a state of mind where I feel the flow and in the end if you're balanced it's all about flow in life and um, and like to find that balance this is what it is all about I believe and the Tai Chi is definitely a one one way how to like balance uh, your uh, the, the, the connection between um, uh, spirit body and mind and it, it just came to me it just came to me and it uh, it also like here and there it had it, it, it I haven't done it that that much because I I could also go there during uh, during the meditation uh, and I probably sometimes go deeper but I've been every time I do it, I was like, "Damn, why am I not doing this anymore?" This is like, like you, you, like within. The funny thing is, also I go and run for like about, let's say, four miles or something, you know, and I sweat, kind of, not really. 
But I do Tai Chi, and within three minutes, I'm... Really? And within 15 minutes, I'm in a puddle of sweat. And it's, it's just like because you're moving different. You're moving exactly the... Because, again, we are made out of water. So whatever the cells need to release, like, clearly gets washed out of water. And it's like detoxing. It's like you're doing those movements and exactly with those energetic movements, you send the, the information into your cells and then like, get out of here, you know, and then you sweat like a motherfucker. And I'm gonna try my own Tai Chi, man. <laughs> Just fucking make it up as you go along. Emmett, can, what, I'm hoping that this is the longest, um, the longest episode we've had so far. Because I still, I want to keep going, mate. I yeah, let's, keep, dude, let's go. I want to like, keep going, I, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm already warmed up today. I had to talk to my manager and, and to a client in Europe, and uh, I'm, I'm warmed up. Fucking so. ready to go, <laughs> mate. We'll go a little bit longer for yeah. sure, man. I mean, dude, look, so I guess bringing your art into it a little bit, um, you know, I can definitely see the, uh, the kind of influence that these experiences have, has, you know, seem to have had on your artwork. And, you know, I was looking through your Instagram at the kind of black and white stuff, which is mm. very like uh, chakra focused mm. and like Truvian man and, mm. the, you know, sitting cross-legged mm -hmm. um, and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, your work anyway, it's, it feels very connected anyway, because it's like autonomical and, and, yeah. and all that kind of thing. But what like, you, you touched on it. You were talking about how your work, you suddenly realized that you, 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 you now were kind of making your work for other people. Uh -huh. Can we go into that sure. a little bit more? Yeah, so of course before it was, I feel like the whole dissection, cross-section, uh, like let's say the last nine, 10 years, uh, that was clearly fueled by a lot of anger I have built up, as I already said, and uh, but also the pictures in my mind with, with the anger came like I was talking about like for example that samurai thing where just like I just see murder everywhere you know and, and like uh, I've been listening to Iron Maiden and Judas Priest a lot during this time which like when you <laughs> listen to the lyrics it's, it's pretty much in what they're talking about you know yeah, right. it's a very very spiritual text but also there's a lot of battle cry you know it's like it's just it's been so it's been with music has been always so important to me to dive into my subconscious, I would say. Uh, so, so it literally had, I've been digging in there and like, so the work has manifested that way. So like, I guess I would say, or no, I know, it, it, I've been connected all along. And um, it, it, clearly it came to a point where we're like, look, the spirit said like, look dude, it's been fine, you know, like, we got to go another way now, you know, it's been, you have done it for you and for your own release, but now you need to understand that, that there's more out there than just your internal madness, uh, your chaos, which is chaos is another word for life, I guess. Uh, but, um, but it's, 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 it's very, it's very interesting. So, yeah. Um, so what I've always done and what, what uh, clearly, um, was um, was happening after the five meo DMT is that I had st like straight up daytime visions, like similar to my ideas before, but it was like it was like let's say you, you just drive your car along Washington Boulevard and suddenly your heart opens, like your body opens like a like a lotus flower and you heart floats out with like tons of electricity like and dissects and like just tick, 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 and puts it back together and like and you're like whoa and you're like fuck what what did just happen you know and i was like i gotta draw that yeah shit. Right. that was awesome <laughs> <laughs> or 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 like like um, also um i park my car get out of my car and i suddenly see like this translucent serpent coming out of my gut going like raw literally hunting something in my in like I'm like whoa what the fuck is happening you know and then it the serpent had like a pattern of like eyeballs and they more and more became real and i was not tripping i was like not on any psychedelics because i barely do that anyway and and suddenly this 
those eyeballs become real and fill up with some toxic en energy or something, and then they just, as soon as the serpent comes back out again, like those, those eyeballs just lift and go like poof. And, you, and I saw that and I was like, damn, I gotta draw that. <laughs> And like in that case, for example, 24 hours late, later, my body shut down and I ended up in a hospital in Colombia. Oh, fuck. Yeah. And um, my body completely cleansed uh, out of nothing. The doctors were like, well, you don't know what the fuck is going you on. You don't do have you, anything. Do you know what happened now? Well, <coughs> um, I talked to like, well, first of all, I went into a realm where I, well, I knew that I was almost about to die, but something pulled me out and I came back. And what, what it did is it just shifted everything and it cleansed me deeply. Like I was throwing up. I was, so I was sh throwing up water. I was shitting water. I was sweating water. I was just like getting rid of it. I had getting rid of shit. Uh, so, so within four, three days, I lost about 35 pounds, I guess. Yeah, like literally like this, just water, just old, as, as I said before, just cleansed. And it, 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 like later I felt like I had like a, karmic, a karmic shift happening, right? Bro, I need, I, it's an easy joke, but uh, I need that right now just <laughs> yeah. to get rid of that quarantine, quarantine weight, right? quarantine uh, yeah. water. Yeah, like we're, we're constantly storing energies and bad energies on top of us. It's just like a, a cleanse is yeah. always a good thing. I have understood that so far. Uh, now after all this but like what happened is well i came out of it and spent sp uh, spray painting like for three days straight yeah yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> right i was like fuck i just beat that shit but i uh i i came back to la and um i talked to another shaman i did uh cambo with uh, a couple times uh, which is uh also um um uh, from a, a frog um from peru i believe or from brazil uh, it's a, it's the, the so-called jungle warrior cleansing um, uh, um, system cleanse, where you you put they put the, the venom of the frog onto onto your like open wound and then it goes into your system and kicks out stuff, wow toxins. So and you throw up and you sweat and you shake and whatever. Um, so I've talked to her about it. What happened to me in in in, um, in Colombia and she was like, <gasps> oh my god. The spirit of ayahuasca came visited you and you didn't even do ayahuasca wow she was like what i'm like oh right because that's the uh, that's the, the, the kind of response that your body has when you do ayahuasca yeah yeah fuck yeah of and course the serpent is also aya is the, the snake yeah it's the serpent bro that is fascinating isn't it because yeah. i suppose that by i don't even know and i need to know more about ayahuasca but i can't even remember what you're doing what is it a leaf is it like what what are you actually ingesting when you well it's a um, ayahuasca is a is a is, is a brew out of a, a brew of, yeah, like uh, bark like a, and a, uh, from plants yeah 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 but i suppose like something it's setting off a kind of yeah. chemical reaction i guess within your body so yeah i mean clearly it's also a dmt so um, yeah yeah it's uh but the thing is um so that's you you're you like you you're kind of that's what you think now as well right that's what happened you, yeah. you pretty much had an ayahuasca yeah, experience. I think, I think it was still it. it was still very much connected to that five meo DMT trip, which I had eight months before. Yeah. So let's let's just say let's just break it down. I was I was I was tripping on DMT for eight months after smoking it once. <laughs> really? And is that like have you have you spoken to other people who um, you know have done DMT the, as well? Like is, you in, is, is this like common or this is very interesting? It really depends who you are like how open you are to those ideas. Like for me, I felt all that shit already my whole life. I just didn't see it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm a visual person. So, so I was, when I came out of the DMT trip, I was like, I knew all this shit already, you know? But many people are, as I said, we're coming back to fear. And it's like, wow, I just had a crazy trip. Well, fuck it, you know? That was weird, but let's just go back to reality. The next question I would ask is like, what is reality anyway? Yeah. You know, but those people are like, oh, whatever. So they, so, so their, their being, their ego and also their spirit just rejects what happens, you know? And I also believe, and I feel like this is, so I've gathered a lot of stories about, about uh, friends of mine doing ayahuasca and uh, whatever, but you know, it's anyway, it's just experiences thing, experiences. If you have to make your own, but like what I see 
by looking into it and the difference, how I just would break the difference between ayahuasca and 5-MeO DMT down is the 5-MeO just fucking kicks your fucking ass. You go in on, on this journey of a roller coaster and and you get information and you get go through that intense ego death. And if you're lucky, not everyone does, right? Uh, so not everyone breaks through the matrix, but just goes through the inner trouble and can't let go of life. Uh, yeah. So, and, and then you get, after you, you die, and in my case I exploded, you get information. And as soon as you go into the white light, it's like, it's almost like your, your spirit or your, let's say your soul rejects to go and look at the information because it's been so intense that you, like many people smoke it and straight go into the light because their soul is not ready to see. Right. Ayahuasca is like a little train ride, a fucking intense train ride for sure. But I feel like you drink it, you don't smoke it, you drink it because clearly you smoke the DMT, it goes into your lungs and it goes straight into your yeah, brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That same as the mushroom goes into your gut and then into your system and you like... It's trying to cleanse out like, the whole thing. Then you, then you, of course, you shit yourself, you cleanse all that shit out, you'd like... Or you, you know, you like your body, you throw up a bunch, and then you're like going to this deep state where you like go and sort out trauma if you can or if you're willing, or you just go through the most horrible times of your life. And but I feel like it's in that case, I would say, just from my feeling and from my perception, of, and for my, myself, I'm very happy I did the 5 MEO DMT because it was such a, a hit, which I, it fits to my, me, like there was clearly like something led me to 5-MeO-DMT and not to ayahuasca. Right? Yeah, right. So, so... Um, Might be the same thing that's leading me right now, mate. You know, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's all connected, right? But so, and many people say like, I've talked to many people who did both. Yeah. And I, I've been sitting in Bali with those dudes and I'm like, ah. Oh, I'm not sure if I should do ayahuasca. Like, I'm not sure if I need it, first of all, right now, because it's already so much happening. And I'm like, do I really need to go there right now? Like, Phew. and then they look at me and it's like, dude, you already did the toad. Like, like if you did the toad, you have, this is like, even Alex Gray told me, I, Alex Gray was asking me like, so she's like, so did you do any psychedelics, like mushrooms or whatever? And I was like, no, I never did. I only did the 5-MeO DMT. And he was like, whoa, you left out a lot of in-betweens, my friend. That is that's that, the one. That, that is the one which uh, definitely kicks your ass the hardest. But on the other hand, I feel like there's more work to be done if you really consciously want to do a lot of work on your on your soul and on your healing with uh, with the ayahuasca like, yeah. yeah i mean because it feels like with uh with the i'm just going to call it dmt because i keep forgetting the digits and letters before it well, the, the, the one is the the N five M the nn dmt and then the other one is the five meo DMT. five meo dmt yeah. um but it makes sense to me at least that like yeah if you do one of these things you're kind of you're being shown or like barriers are being broken down, egos mm -hmm. being uh, like dismantled and you're dying mm -hmm. before you die uh, mm -hmm. or, or, you know, if you're one of the lucky ones. But I suppose like with anything, right, it's like you should come out of that experience if you have a, an amazing experience like yours and it's like, well, look, probably for the rest of my life, my uh, perception is, is altered because I've seen something that I can never forget so to that end i imagine that yeah you don't want to then take that experience and, mm -hmm. and and essentially package it up like a fucking party drug and be like well i'm gonna do that every friday night you don't need to but i imagine with the passing of time the old kind of thought forms and old ideas and old parts of your ego can begin to like rebuild and you could right you could possibly forget certain parts that mm -hmm. then an ayahuasca uh what you call it trip session yeah, yeah. <laughs> might you know, help kind of like slap you around the face again. So what I'm saying is, should we go and do some fucking ayahuasca? <laughs> Who's in? 
I'm, I'm good, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, bro? So am I, I think. Uh, so, so the thing is, what, what people also have to understand before they do something like that is um, this medicine is not going to heal you just like this. Yeah. You're not going to like go, like have the worst time of your life or the best time of your life and just throw up a bunch and, and, and uh, like, um, like skin like a serpent. Uh, and then you're like, hey, I'm good. Uh, the thing is, it's it's. I call it like there's a, ger- a, a word in German. It's called uh, Fleischwolf, uh, and that's directly tr- translated. It's meat wolf. So it's a meat grinder, you know, like, like okay. <laughs> so it's like it's like uh, it literally throws you into the meat grinder and it spits you out in pieces. And the hard the, the work starts after. You gotta like you gotta put yourself back together. The the the, the medicine is not gonna do it for you. But that's where that's where you can show how like how much love and compassion you have for yourself so you can put yourself back together and patience is another thing it's like it's gonna take some time and and i i see sometimes people who do like one after i ask a trip after the other like in a, in a time period of like maybe two months or something i'm like please people like destroy and rebuild you know like you 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 get torn into pieces you put yourself to better uh, back together but you need to integrate and yeah. that takes time right and the integration is the the most part and i feel like i mean I, I wouldn't i wouldn't be here right now if i would not be keen enough to talk about it and i only can talk about it the way i do because i've integrated a lot of stuff and um and um I would never say I, I have integrated everything because what is out there, we don't know. We don't yeah, know yeah. shit, right? But um, um, like a, wor- a word of advice is definitely like, look, uh, it's going to, yes, as the shaman said, it's going to change your life. And a lot of like c- fucking crazy shit is going to happen to you where you feel like you like in a very, very, it's just a kind of cheesy, bad movie like uh, some magical shit some synchronicities are gonna happen like things you're like people say shit where like because your perception changes and you're you're integrating information and like as i said like i understand that i'm painting for the world right now i'm i'm here to express myself so others can heal you know and they they love my work they hate my work but whatever it, it does inside of them it brings healing and healing is rough like I know that more than most probably it's kicked my ass so hard it's still kicking my ass and but you got to accept that and like work with it and and put yourself back together and uh, that's when your real journey starts because then you also know what your mission and your purpose in this life is out of a different perspective and not just like nitrous 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 graffiti everywhere <laughs> you know uh, this it's a different thing like um like yeah it's a i'm like I, I i suddenly feel like i have a responsibility you almost can say you know like and i i i, I must say i like it but Here's like, again, the ego likes it and the true self likes it. Right. So there is, there is a balance. So I am happy to whatever I express and those black and white illustrations you were talking about, um, it's all about my, my own healing journey. Whatever, have, whatever happened to me, uh, I have put into those 31 or whatever illustrations and it literally has steps. And to each one, I wrote what I integrated, and then I found the perfect uh, saying from like Ram Dass, Alan Watts, um, fuck knows, um, uh, Eckhart Tolle. Uh, so because those guys also have been there, they have been exactly at the same point, and I'm like, duh, you know, it just makes sense. I have been on those on this point. I have gone through this madness but it is literally like my personal 
book of healing and it's just a message i cannot tell you that this is going to be your path but this is this is what i had to go through and the depression has been as much as a part of as the psychedelic medicine or clearing out past life trauma or other traumas or whatever and in the end it comes down to the one thing is that you learn how to let go of the old and let the the, uh, the new enter wow mate um dude beautiful i think that's a perfect place to end it i think so too. um <laughs> i'm i'm dude, mate i'm loving your artwork at the minute i've always lo loved your artwork but what's so exciting is that it does feel like whatever the whatever experiences you're having they're uh, they're definitely feeding into your creativity and allowing you still to evolve and go somewhere new um which is really exciting man dude, let's see where it goes let's see where it goes <laughs> yeah yeah right every yeah. fucking morning yeah born again um dude thanks so much for coming well, on mate thank I, you that I, was awesome yeah, yeah i hope that we broke a little record for the longest uh, podcast but i was riveted i've got the thumbs up from emmett so we did <laughs> awesome. um but yeah mate and i feel like you can come back dude, in a few dude, episodes time and we dude, can talk I, some more I, I tell you this is this is i knew already this is not going to be a topic which has been told in like one hour or something yeah it's like yeah it is is complex yeah right for real well look everybody watch out for uh, part two and hit me up in the dms if you want to go and do some ayahuasca with me even though i might kick you out the room like uh, night trust does <laughs> all right mate thanks a lot man thank you <laughs> Whew.